Lord, give Sister Cheryl and her family extra and added strength right now. Dear Lord, touch Sister Cheryl's body, dear Lord. Be with the Starks family, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Be with the Ray family, in the name of Jesus. I want to anoint us one more time. In Jesus' holy and righteous name, amen and thank God. We're back, and guess what? This is the last installment in the book of Acts. We have been traveling down this journey since the first chapter. We are now at the 28th chapter, and it's been almost two years, two years of our lives, preaching and teaching about the book of Acts. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Continue to look at us, hit the subscribe button, encourage others to pick it up and look at it and look at the book of Acts. So now we are at the final chapter, the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. Praxis in the Greek, the extraordinary acts of exemplary men or exemplary acts of extraordinary men and women of God. The book of Acts, the 28th chapter. We're going to come today from verse 25 through 31, taking our text from the very last verse, preaching the kingdom of God concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. Preaching the kingdom of God concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. It starts out on an extraordinary note. Look, we, we ended on the 25th verse. We're going to go back to the 25th verse. So when they did not agree amongst themselves, meaning the Jewish leaders in the city of Rome at that time, the synagogue leaders, the president of the synagogue, people from the Sanhedrin council, people from uh, both the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Celts, and the Essenes, all these people came together to reason with the Apostle Paul. And this is what happened. So when they did not agree amongst themselves, they departed after Paul had said one word. Now when it said it did not agree, it didn't agree because it was going against what they taught. They didn't believe Jesus was the Messiah. They didn't believe Jesus was the Savior. They didn't believe Jesus was the Son of the living God. But, but Paul stood his ground when talking with them. Uh, it said back up in verse 23, persuading them concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and the prophets from morning till evening. Some were persuaded, verse 24, but by the things that were spoken, some disbelieved. You got people today that don't believe Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. And of course, some of this stuff that's going on with this gospel now, I can understand why. Because people don't want to go to this 25th verse. Listen at this 25th verse. Get this 25th verse. Paul had said one word. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit. A lot of times today, people want to go on what they know. They don't care about the Holy Ghost. They don't care about the power of the Holy Spirit. It's just about what they can do to convince people what they, it's not about you. It's about the third person of the God, the Paracletus. It's about the uh, Ruach HaKodash, the Holy Ghost, brothers and sisters. If you want power, you need the Holy Ghost, amen? It's not the power of you. It's not the power of what you can do or conjure up or, or go. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen at this. Spoke rightly through Isaiah, the prophet, to our fathers. Verse 26 saying, go to this people and say, hearing you will hear and shall not understand. And seeing you will see and not perceive. That's verse 26. Now, where did this come from? Why, why, why is this important? Why was Paul saying this to these Jewish leaders at the time? Because back in the book of Isaiah, the sixth chapter, verse 9, first verse, first, last part of verse 8 says, Here am I, send me. And he said, verse 9, Go and tell the people, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. 
make the heart of the people dull and their ears heavy and shut their ears, their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return and be healed. This was a fulfillment out of the book of Isaiah way over some 800, 900 years later being fulfilled in the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, Praxis, the book of Acts. So he's telling them, go to this people and say, hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and see you will see and not perceive. Verse 27, listen to this, for the heart of his people have grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes have closed, least they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, and so that I should heal them. Now the second part of this comes out of the book of Matthew. We go to the book of Matthew, Mati Hayu in the Hebrew, Matthew, the first chapter, I'm going to tie it all together in a moment. Chapter 13, verse 14 and 15. And in them, the prophecy of Isaiah, here's the fulfillment again, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and see you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of the people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing, their eyes they have closed. Least they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Least they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. And that's the last part of verse 27 again in the book of Acts out of the 28th chapter. So what Paul is doing, he's telling them what thus saith the Lord out of the book of Matthew. And he's giving them the full prophecy out of the book of Isaiah the ninth chapter. So my brothers and sisters, would this have had an effect on them? Yes, it would have, because as I said earlier, these men that were the president of the synagogues, they knew some of what was going on out of the Old Testament. The ones that ran the synagogue, they would have known. The certain, certain Pharisees, Sadducees, certain zealots, certain Essenes, and certainly the high priests would have known. So those, those that were, or had been, Kohen had the dog, that means the highest priest, they would have known what was in the book of Isaiah or it had been read to them at some time or another in their studies or if they were a rabbi or had rabbinic training, they would have known what it said. Hallelujah. They would have known, and here is Paul giving it back to them again. Now there's a key to this. Don't miss the key. Don't turn the channel off. Stay with me for a moment. I'm going to give you the key to all of this in just a moment. Hallelujah. Also, in Isaiah, the 42nd chapter of the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 42, 6 and 8, it says, I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the Gentiles. This means that the word of God, this means the prophecy of the Bible, this means the, the salvation, the message of salvation of Jesus Christ was going to go to all the world and it's gone to all the world and it's with all the world today. Verse 7, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, those who sit in the darkness from the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name. Ego a me, I am the Lord. Hallelujah today. My glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carve images. Behold, the former things have come to pass. The new things I declare before they spring forth, I tell you of them. And then that, you look down in 10 verses, it says, sing to the Lord a new song and his praise. So the message has been completed. The prophecy has been completed. It is to now go beyond the Jews and into the hearts of also the Gentiles. But what is the key to all this? What is the thing that makes this go? What is the thing? What is the one thing? Go back to go back to verse 25 again. 
they departed after Paul had said one word, the Holy Spirit. See, a lot of people today, they don't want, they don't want to do move when the Spirit moves them. They don't want to do what the Spirit tells them to do. They want to do what they want to do. You have people like that today who say they've been born again, who say they know Jesus, but they never talk about the Holy Spirit. They never lean and depend on the Holy Spirit. They don't pray in the Spirit. They don't seek the Spirit of God. When they talk about that, they may talk about God, maybe. They may talk about a little bit of Jesus, but it's all on their own fruition. It's all about who they think they are. It's not about you. I don't care how smart you are. I don't know how clever you are. I don't care how much you say you know. I don't care how much you think you know. You've got to lean and depend on the power of the Holy Ghost. If you're going to make it in this world, if you're going to do the work of make full proof of your ministry, if you're going to tell the world that Jesus is real, you've got to, hallelujah, lean and depend on the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Verse 28. Therefore, let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? You have the Jews, and who are the Gentiles? Everybody else. If you're black, the Jews. If you're from uh, the, the continent of Africa, the 52 countries there, you're Gentile. If you're from anywhere in the Asia area countries, you're Gentile. Russia, Gentile. Ukraine, uh, anywhere. Europe, Great Britain, you're a Gentile. America, Gentile. Central America, Mexico, Gentile. South America, Gentiles. If you're in Iceland, Gentiles. If you're in Antarctica, Gentiles. If you're out in Guadalcanal somewhere, you're a Gentile. Hallelujah. And the message of Jesus Christ is for you. Hallelujah. A lot of people today want to mix it with other things. No, the message of Islam is not for you. No, the message of Buddhism is not for you. No, if going somewhere and getting a Ouija board is not for you. Going to witchcraft is not for you. Followers of uh, Maharishi, Mahayo, that's not for you. The message for the world today as we get ready to go out of the book of Acts is that there's only one name given under the heavens by which men, Gentiles, and Jews, and everybody else shall be saved. And that's the name of Jesus. See, a lot of people have this strange look on church and Christianity. It's nothing but a social club for them. It's not a social club. If you are a born-again believer of Jesus Christ, you should be praying for your children that are unsaved, praying for your unsaved people in your country, praying for your neighbors that are unsaved, praying for lukewarm Christians that they accept the message of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah today. He has been sent to the Gentiles, and here it is at the end of verse 28. They will hear it. If they're going to have salvation, they will hear it. If they're going to have life after more after death, they've got to hear it. If they're going to be caught up with Jesus when he catches us up in the air, they will have to hear it and believe it and follow it in the name of Jesus. Verse 29. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed, listen to this, and had a great dispute amongst themselves. There's very little written about this verse in commentary. My people, when it says the great dispute amongst themselves, we don't know how great that dispute was. We don't know how long it lasted. All that we know is all the groups that were represented there on that day had a great dispute. Many of them would not follow Jesus. Many of them would not listen to the words of the Apostle Paul. Many of them would continue on in darkness. Brothers and sisters, very little is written about verse 28. 
but here it is. Well, verse, excuse me, verse 29, but here it is. Keep on telling the world who Jesus is. Verse that yeah, we're almost done. Verse 30, then Paul dwelt two whole years in his written house and received all those who came to him. Verse 31, preaching the kingdom of God. That's all Paul continued to do was preaching the kingdom of God. Many people today, they don't understand that this little bit of time that you got on this earth, spend it preaching the kingdom of God, telling people about the kingdom of God, praying that the Holy Ghost will open the eyes and ears of people, that they will receive the Lord before it's ever lasting too late. Brothers and sisters, go with things concerned the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence and no one forbidding him. A lot of people think that this was the imprisonment when Paul would be beheaded, but it wasn't. What it says is Paul went on the right first Timothy and Titus shortly after he was released around 62 to 64 AD. But after he wrote 2 Timothy from his second imprisonment, Paul was back in prison again. He could have went off and sailed somewhere and retired, but Paul didn't do that. He kept on telling the world that Jesus was real. He keep on, kept on preaching the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, teaching concerning the things of the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence and no one forbidding him. As we close the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostle, go back and continue to read and look at the book of Acts. Praxis. Keep on looking at Acts. Keep on learning from Acts. Keep on gleaning from Acts. Keep on, as it tells you all through the book of Acts, drawing from the power of the Holy Ghost and stand concerning the teaching and the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, dear God, for thank you for this book that's placed in the Bible. Thank you, dear God, for the words of this book. Thank you, dear God, for the teaching of this book. We're going to continue on telling the world who Jesus is. I'm going to trust in the Lord. The song goes, I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm going to keep on trusting in the Lord until I die. Until I die. Until I die. Keep on telling people. A lot of people today don't want to listen to the word of God. I was at a funeral today and talking with a woman who said she hadn't been in church in 50 years. My brothers and sisters, people are dying and going to hell. Keep on telling them who Jesus is and keep on believing. Keep on sharing. Keep on telling the world that Jesus is real. Keep on telling people he died on that cross and got up on the third day morning with all power in his hands. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God for the lesson of the book of Acts.